chiropractor adjustment two days ago so today was just like a light easy stretching easy ride day and now he is eating his lunch and I figured it's high time that I go ahead and just tell you all about Manny stop no we're not that over and how I got him and kind of just our whole journey up into this point currently so to start out it was around February of 2023. Sorry, there's so many flies in here. And I was finally ready to buy my own horse. I had up until that point leased horses I rode in college. So like I kind of always had a horse to ride. And it was time for me to graduate from college. And I just wanted to buy my own horse. So that's where I was at. Um, Fresh out of college, I did not have much money, period. So I kind of knew that my options were slim because horses are expensive, especially right now. And I pretty much knew that I was going to be getting an off track thoroughbred because they're pretty much the lowest priced horse because they're so frequently in horses, they're so frequently thoroughbreds coming off the track with new homes. So that's kind of where I was looking. So to begin, I found a barn locally to where I live so that I knew I had a place to keep my horse when I got one. So I found my barn, I got settled in with those people, told them that I was gonna be looking for a horse in the next couple of months and they were pretty much prepared to take me in whenever I found the horse that I was going to have. So fast forward a couple of months, I had been looking mainly doing my looking through Facebook. I don't know, that's probably not the best thing to do, but I did it, sue me. I put like an in search of post up in like an off track thoroughbred Facebook group. And basically I, I had like an idea of the horse that I wanted from my lease horses and just like the horses that I've ridden, I just knew what I wanted. I wanted a big horse, I love big horses, I'm tall, I'm like five nine and a half, so I don't like to feel like I'm a giant riding horse. I wanted a bay. I just love bays. I'm a bay girl. I love me a bay. And I wanted it to be a gelding, also a gelding girl. I don't like I like mares, but I just knew I, I have a better connection with gelding, so that's what I was looking for. And I wanted him to have a face marking. And I put that post out on Facebook and basically just people commented like horses that they had that they think that I would have enjoyed or wanted that they were selling. And I got like a ton of comments, a ton of different horses being like shown to me through Facebook. And Manny was one of them. And through his pictures and like the videos that I saw of him, I just like knew immediately that I wanted him. Like I knew I wanted this horse. I love him. He's everything that I wanted in a horse. And he ticked all my boxes and he was the one period i just i just knew that so come end of may beginning of april i was making plans to go by and he was out of state not too far from 
like it was like an eight hour drive I think from where I live. Ah, ew, <laughs> nanny. But I just decided that I wanted him and I was going to get him. So I drove eight hours to get him. Knew that he was the one for me and bought him. So now I have Manny. But when I got Manny, he was straight off the track pretty much. I think he'd been off for like maybe a month um, was his last race. And he was very skinny, like very, very skinny. I have pictures that I'll insert here of like the day that I brought him home. And so I knew it was not going to be like, we're immediately gonna start riding. Like we're getting into work, we're gonna be jumping in the next month. Like that was not gonna be the case. So I, I had accepted the fact that he was gonna be like a project and that I was gonna really have to bring him along, starting with weight gain. Um, so for the first like two to three months that I had him, I, had, I did not get on him. We hand walked. We did a lot of what I'm doing right now, sitting in the stall, hanging out together while he eats. <laughs> I did a lot of hand walking up and down hills and trails and stuff like that. Did a lot of groundwork, just a lot of bonding and hand stuff because he was just in no condition to be ridden and I wanted him to put on some weight. So a few months later, he had gained a bit of weight. I decided I could get on him and start doing some light work, light trotting, like easy stuff, just to get used to each other, get him used to being ridden again, and just to start kind of working and developing some muscles that you can't really get without riding. Um, hey, along the way, I had the inkling pretty much knew that like this was the case that he had ulcers because he's an off the track thoroughbred the majority of them come off with ulcers he was very skinny and it was just like I knew he had them so I got those taken care of he was diagnosed with grade three ulcers and we had to go on like two and a half months of ulcer guard treatment which helped him immensely he started like acting so much better he wasn't so snippy about everything like he had been very snippy when I would put his blankets on in the winter or like when I would touch his sides so that got a lot better and he finally was able to start absorbing the nutrition he was getting through his food instead of just it kind of canceling out with the ulcers um so yeah so we took care of that and his coat's finally starting to come along but he looks so he started to look more healthy. When I first got him, his coat was very dull. He was like, his hair was just like shedding and like molding. It was, he was just not in good condition when I got him. And so everything was kind of starting to come together. And then when we were getting his ulcers scoped, we discovered that he had an epiglottic entrapment, which basically meant that his epiglottis was like entrapped by like, it looks like a sac around his epiglottis which kind of obstructs his breathing and makes it hard for him to, to work and basically just makes things difficult for him. Like exercise is not easy. He's very exercise intolerant. Breathing's not easy and whatnot. So next up on the table was to get that taken care of, which after his ulcer medicine was finished, after about two months of that, I was like, okay, we need to get this surgery on the schedule. So we scheduled him for his epiglottic entrapment, took him to the vet, got that taken care of, super simple surgery. Like I think it literally took 20 minutes. They kept him a couple days just to keep an eye on him, make sure it like was effective and everything. Um, but it literally the surgery itself took them like 20 minutes to just go in there. They actually went in his like throat with this little like, it almost looks like a hanger. It's like a little metal thing. And they basically just like slit the little skin pouch that is holding his epiglottis and it releases it and frees it up. So he went and got that surgery. I want to say that was kind of at the beginning of the summer. So it's only been a couple of months since he had that. And yeah, 
so we got that surgery taken care of. So that was out of the way. He is a roarer, so when we exercise, he's a very loud breather. He does roar. He has had tie back surgery in the past, which is something that they could see when they scoped him. But that's okay, like it doesn't really inhibit his performance or anything. He's just loud. That's all right. But that's okay, isn't it, bud? Um, so we got all that taken care of. And now we are pretty consistently working. Like he jumps now, we do some jumps. Our biggest issue as of late, well, not as of late, as of always, this has always been our issue, is his left leap. He does not pick up his left leap well at all. Like nine times out of 10, he's gonna pick up the right when it's supposed to be the left. He'll always land his left lead over a jump and he'll swap to his left lead over a pole. But for some reason, picking it up is just not really something that he's great at, which is fine. We're working on it. And it's very uncomfortable when we are on the left lead. So right now that's kind of our um, focus is getting him more comfortable going to the left, building his muscle. He's come along beautifully. He has not, he's not there yet. Like he still needs probably a couple hundred pounds of weight on him, but he's huge. He's a 17 three hand horse. He came very, I, when I first got him, he was very overweight and he's put on, I would say like 500 to 600 pounds since I got him and we're still putting up weight. We still have a weight and a ways to go in that area, but he eats three meals a day. He eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner, has constant access to egg. It's turned out overnight. So he has grass all overnight and he eats everything that he gets. So we're working on it. It's a work in progress. It's frustrating because he's an aggressive eater. Okay. It's frustrating because I document our journey through Instagram, which is probably how you all who are watching found my YouTube channel. And Manny has gained a good bit of followers because people like to keep up with him and see kind of how he is and what he's doing. Um, but with that and documenting our journey to the internet and the people that want to watch, we subject ourselves to a good bit of judgment. And I personally get like a lot of comments about him and how, you know, why is he so skinny? You've had him for a year, over a year. Why does he not have a top line yet? Like all this stuff. And it's frustrating because I know like ever since I've had Manny, he has never been without anything. I, I <laughs> basically work my job for him. Like he is where all my money goes. He has never been without food, anything that he's ever needed. He has a nutritionist. He has a chiropractor. He has a veterinarian. He gets magna waved. He sees everyone that he could possibly see. And it's just something that's taking time to get him to gain the weight that he needs. Like he can't do it overnight and that's also not the healthy way for him to gain his weight. And the parts of him that I notice being the skinniest or like the least muscle are the parts that are gonna come last because that's just the natural order of things. Like his top line is gonna come last and his hip bones will round out last. But, um, it's very easy for me to get in my head about the negative comments that we get on Instagram and just like people who know nothing about him or like what our journey has been, inserting their opinions and basically like discrediting all the work that we've put in so far. So that has been something that I personally, he doesn't give it, he doesn't care. <laughs> this is something that I have had to deal with and am getting better at dealing with because I know that in the last year and four months that I've had him, he has had nothing but the best care that anyone could possibly give him. And yeah, that's just something I've had to come to terms with on my own and just not let other people's opinions bother me. He is the best thing that's ever happened to me and I'm very grateful to have him. And I just am grateful for his journey and I never wanted to rush him. So is, has it taken longer than I had initially anticipated to get him, like, I wanna get him in his show ring eventually? Yes, 
it's it has taken me longer. Like eventually, I want I'm basically training him to be my hunter jumper. Um, and I thought initially that we would be it would be a quicker process, but it hasn't been, and that's fine. I've been lucky enough to show one of my friend's horses in the meantime, just so that I am able to do a little bit of showing and not miss it so much while he's still going through all the phases of his journey that he needs to. And I never want to rush him and put him in a situation that he shouldn't be in. So that has been my main goal is to make sure that I am doing right by him and giving him everything that he needs and just making him comfortable. He, oh my goodness, you're eating him up so fast, Manny. Is that good? Another thing is, as he's gotten like healthier and put on weight and just gotten all his issues taken care of, he, when I first got him, he was really just like so docile and like had no spunk about him at all, which is like not typically, if you know, like a thoroughbred right off the track, he's only, when I got him, he was six, now he's eight, um, still young for a horse, but like, you know, thoroughbreds are meant to be like high strung and a little wild and he was nothing of the sort i hi no don't knock that down no no anyway as i was saying him being a very docile and like gentle horse i have credited that to the fact that he was very malnourished he was not feeling good at all but as he's put on weight and as he's put on muscle and as he's done more and taken care of his ulcers and gotten his surgery, he has developed quite the personality. He can be a big brat, but I'm perfectly okay with that because I'd rather him be bratty and feeling good than be the perfect manner horse and not be feeling good at all. So we have <laughs> come a long way and he's had a change in his personality. He's finally feeling better and that's all i can really ask for isn't that right buddy isn't that right he also is a very quick don't do it and i stop <laughs> he also listens extremely well everything that i put in front of him pulls little jumps little combinations and jumps he has successfully done it might not be the most beautiful experience the first time through, but he ends up getting there. And I couldn't ask any more of him. He tries so hard and he's the best horse. And I think that he has the brightest future ahead of him. And I just know it's gonna be so rewarding to finally get into the show ring and truly know that he started where he did and that we were able to get to where we are now and where we're gonna be in the future. So that is General Manny's story. Um, if anyone has any specific questions, you can comment them and I will answer them. But I just wanted to kind of get on here and talk and give like the, basically what we've been doing for the past year and four months. And it has been with its challenges but it has been worth it and I couldn't ask for a better pony. I love him more than anything in the world and he is truly my best friend. I don't think there's like a day that I don't think about him even if I don't get to come see him, but I am out here with him pretty much every single day. Because I just love him. You're my boy. You're my boy, aren't you? Come here. Thank you for listening and watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about him. So I'm going to get back to posting my YouTube videos more consistently. I kind of took like a hiatus. <laughs> Unintentional. I just got busy. But I will see you guys next time.